So now this is like the happy personal <laughs> video that is also the sad thing. What is my hair doing? I don't know what side my hair flips on anymore. Yeah. Russia's response to the West's decision to supply tanks to Ukraine was swift and familiar. A series of missile and drone attacks. Such grief. My life is broken, says this woman. <sighs> the southeastern province of Karamanmaras in Turkey was decimated by two large earthquakes, measuring 7.5 and 7.8 affecting hundreds of thousands of people there and in neighbouring Syria. Uh, I don't, this is where I don't know where to begin. You know, when we moved here to PA, we made a video when we were sat uh, in front of all our moving boxes talking about how happy we were that we moved. Mm -hmm. But truth be told, we were like not doing good yeah. at all. And we still aren't really. Yeah. With the death toll standing at 33,000 and the UN warning that figure could double, Dr. Salim says it's crucial that aid from the UK and elsewhere continues. The move was the hardest thing both of us has have ever done. While Turkey deals with its dead, it's also trying to cope with the living. The earthquake hit an area almost as big as Great Britain, affecting 13 and a half million people. Makeshift camps are being hastily constructed, but entire cities have been made homeless. Um. I think we may have talked about it a little, but it, it was a nightmare. Everything went wrong. The city of Iskandarin had a population of two and a half million. The camp for those who've lost their homes when it is finished will only have capacity for three and a half thousand. This is the challenge across southeast Turkey now. Despite the best efforts of aid workers, there are not enough tents and there are not enough toilets. So the next threat for those who have survived the earthquake comes from being crammed in to unsanitary conditions. I got heat stroke trying to pack all these yeah. trucks on my own because we had two trucks and a trailer. What is my hair doing? I don't know what side my hair flips on anymore. What is my hair doing? I don't know what side. We're invited to see inside one of the tents. For seven people. We don't have anywhere to wash, the woman tells me. This place is not hygienic. We did this move like we've done all of the other moves, which is the two on our, of us on our own. packing the trucks. Those who don't even have a tent must find their own shelter for bitterly cold nights. Four children sleep in this lorry cabin. We need a home to live in. Even a shipping container would do. And all the children here need clothes. We've never Heavy had help. Furniture. Never yeah. had help. We tried to hire help. We tried to hire help and then they bailed on us. <laughs> that challenge is shared across the border in Syria, where the damage of a decade of war is dwarfed by the damage done in minutes by the quake. Here, without any significant aid, they're left to do what they can. What use a spoon with ruins on this scale? Yeah, yeah, that's so. Fun. Yeah, we did it all on our yeah. own, and it was June in Texas, so it was hot, really, really hot. All that pierces the pitch black are fires to fend off the cold, and the searchlights, the flashing lights, and the headlights that tell you the emergency teams are working round the clock. The end of the world here happened just after 4 a.m. in this quake zone, the dead of night has literal meaning. And we doubled the workload because we also moved my mom here. So Yeah. And that was rough. The couple on the right here are waiting to claim the body of his mother. She's my mom. Not mother in law. She's my mom. And if you watch me on Twitch, you already know the story and you've probably heard it a couple of times. I haven't really said it here, but uh you know, I'm not going to go into everything else that happened, but it was a three day straight drive. It is some while since the worst of the war tore through this place. Lives ended, lives uprooted. And yet, despite all this, life has to go on. In fact, in this strange, changed world, it is the most natural act of defiance. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was way harder than we anticipated, and uh, I, I've skipped over a lot of stuff. 
um, to get to the point, but I ended up having a big breakdown, like a big mental breakdown. Yeah. Um, Khadija Hussain lost her son, daughter-in-law and grandchildren. Only five-year-old Hadil survived. I can't look at this child, she says. She's lost her father. She's lost everyone. For years, this land was destroyed from above by acts of war. This destruction came from below and an act of nature. Nature has succeeded in destroying what war left behind and the hopes of a population exhausted by generational crisis. We're about half an hour from finally getting here on the road trip and I had to pull the truck over on a highway and almost passed out on the side of the road and had what I think was my first real anxiety attack. After seven days, this man shouts in fury and desperation for someone to free his dead mother. I don't know, it sucked. Yeah. I was very scary. I couldn't get back in the truck. Um, my body just wasn't, my, my mind wanted to. I wanted, well, I don't know what wanted to. I wanted to be at the house. You wanted to be done. In Ukraine, they worry that the war has lost its capacity to shock, to stir hearts, to summon help from distant lands with troubles of their own. But no one wants an end to this torment, more than the children. When the war finishes, how are you going to celebrate? I wanted to be done, but I just couldn't physically get back in the truck and we were stuck there until... Um... In this blackened landscape, along the line where Russia's invasion met Ukrainian resistance, the buildings disfigured by war far outnumber the few that stand intact. And we were stuck there until highway patrol came and carried us off the highway. More than a week after the double earthquake, survivors are still being pulled from the rubble. Um, and it took us hours to finally get home because I kept having to pull over and breathe because I was just having multiple anxiety attacks. In his nightly address, President Zelensky again criticized Russia for targeting civilians. It is not yet known how many people are under the rubble. Unfortunately, the list of the dead is growing every hour. My condolences to the families and friends. Well, it was also night, which I feel like is way harder with anxiety, at least for me, to drive. For hours, they'd searched through the night for survivors in what's left of a nine-story apartment building. On Saturday, a Russian missile landed in the entrance, turning several floors from family homes to smoldering rubble. By hand, with cranes, and using sniffer dogs, firefighters and volunteers dug for victims. Watching on, friends and family waited for news of loved ones. Well, we were rushing to get here before yeah. nightfall, yeah. which is why it was so stressful. Yeah. I went out into the yard and people just screamed. Children, women, bloody people were walking around. The police were everywhere. I went out, but the floor of the house was gone. Anyway, uh, it was bad. It was bad to the point where I immediately got into therapy. I, I had anxiety attacks for about two weeks straight after that. Yeah. It took a very long time for me to feel normal again. In fact, that really only started happening the last couple of months. Ten minutes after the quake begins, people are rushing from their homes, the ground still moving beneath them. A few have grabbed blankets, but they can't outrun nature as city after city falls. Він так само дуже переживає, він дуже боїться втратити тата. Він постійно питає, а чи не знищить тато, чи не загине тато, а як тато лікарі вилікують чи ні. Kim decided somewhere in all this mess. Oh yeah, I had a brilliant idea. That it would be a good idea to get a puppy. Yeah, I thought why not add more stress to our already stress and get a thing that needs us constantly. Only when there are 10 or more rockets, says Vlada, then my mother gets afraid and we run to the bathroom and hide there. Yeah, it, you might have seen her in some videos. Again, it's been tough to want to talk too much about personal stuff lately, but uh, it was a lot 
on us initially. The first three days, I genuinely felt like I was losing my mind. Yeah. Because we thought we'd done goofed. Because we could not handle the pressure of a, like essentially I, a baby. Outside an intensive care unit in a hospital in a corner of the earth, the world has all but abandoned. A young mother tries to process the trauma of the last week. <laughs> Dima gave birth to her son Adnan in hospital half an hour after she was injured in the earthquake. With nowhere else to go, she took him back to the ruined building where they lived, only to be caught again in another collapse. She is, she's like, it's like literally having a human baby for the first few days, cause like, they don't know what's going on. They can't tell you. And you're just freaking out cause you don't know what you're doing. A wall fell on top of me as I slept, she explains. My husband got us out. There was no one there to help. Baby Adnan arrived back in hospital pale and dehydrated. But I don't know, we got through it. This is the funny thing. I think that whole situation and like the moving and everything has made us better, like together. The challenge for the rescue teams is immense. People were in all of these buildings and many have not yet been searched. Little wonder this death toll is predicted to rise significantly in the coming days. We'd taken so many strides to get to that point, though. Yeah. Like, we'd worked on our, both of ourselves individually and our marriage and our relationship yeah. so much to get to a good part point. Yeah. And then this, whatever we've gone through in the last six months has has tenfolded it. Yeah. Um, because... It's crazy. I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't have done any of this without Kim. Um, this is tragedy and trauma compounded. All ages struggling to comprehend what's happened. In the hospitals, the beds are full of the most gravely injured. It's not yet clear whether their names will be added to the list of the living or the dead. So yeah, I need I need a, like an actual break mm -hmm. with no YouTube, no Twitch, yeah. no anything. You probably won't see me for a while. You might see Kim. Kim, you got you could buy Kim's bears. <laughs> Kim's selling these guys on her Etsy, <laughs> and she never told anyone. Just my bear hype man. Don't so you can him. you can go buy these. That would support us a lot and support <laughs> Kim a lot. Look how cute they are. They're so sweet. The medical teams are now having to answer the hardest questions. Uh, we cannot find any answers for their question. Where is my pop, uh, dad? Where is mom? Where is parents? Where my relatives? When, where is uh, for the children? Where, where is my toys? Such questions have come from children like Mohammed. He's lost his home and all his family and gained only the loneliness of loss. For so many orphaned children, what blessing is survival in the face of such tragedy? People keep asking us, like, how are you liking PA? <laughs> you happy with the move? And we feel like Debbie Down is when we're like, we really, I, I've, I haven't left the house. <laughs> A mix of having to work too much, but also been terrified to leave. So I barely know what's out there. We haven't had a chance to really yeah. do anything or explore. Yeah. From the skies, the extent of the devastation laid bare. Cities flattened. Rows of graves. Shelters for survivors. One week on from the series of powerful earthquakes that are known to have killed at least 36,000 people. Hopes of finding survivors are dwindling. Um, and to be honest, I've been such a wreck emotionally and physically since we moved that it's been hard to not regret moving because of how much it messed me up. And we've talked about that a lot. It is now the silence that is deafening. Eight days on, the sounds of life under the collapsed buildings are all but extinguished. 40,000 lives have been lost and they will very sadly not be the last. Families are still waiting, but no longer hoping in that silence and cold and often in darkness. They await the bodies of those they hold dear to be dug out from where they were buried by the earthquake so they can be given a fitting final farewell as religious tradition dictates. We don't want to go back. 
No, that and would make it even worse. But there's like, nothing for us there, but there's a part of me that's like... I wouldn't be like this if I had I wouldn't moved. be like this if I moved. Yeah. Because it's... it's if, again, if you watch me on Twitch, you already know how bad it is and how bad it's been. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. All through today, rescuers have continued searching for survivors. 39 have been found, including six children. But 43 are still believed to be missing. The city's mayor has warned the chances of them having survived are minimal. <sighs> but, yeah, the move, but also I didn't realize how much working from home for the last half a decade messed me up. Yeah. Antakya's history stretches back 2,500 years. When St. Peter and St. Paul lived here, they knew it as Antioch, but few live in the old city today. Most of the homes that line its narrow streets have been rendered uninhabitable. Because I would go weeks and months without leaving the house, yeah, literally. because you wouldn't have to. Weeks and months. I know. I wouldn't leave the house at all. Understandably, most of the rescue effort has been concentrated on the largest buildings. More residents mean more chance of finding survivors. But the consequence is that smaller buildings like this one in Antakya's old city have been ignored. In areas like this, they truly have no idea just how many people are dead and buried. And then COVID, you know, we didn't leave the house for like two years. Yeah. Unless we absolutely had to, yeah. And now I'm like terrified to leave the house. Yeah. It was like a switch and I don't know what happened or why or when. But uh, yeah, I got to try and fix that. Yeah. Throughout the wreckage that was Antakya, pain is plentiful. Yeah, I think that's it. Honestly, I'm even, I was even dreading making this video and I, I'm even at the end of my rope trying to make it. Ayham is one of Syria's newest orphans. His mum and dad and his sister all died in the early hours of last Monday. He remembers his father carrying him downstairs. Then a big rock fell on us, he says. Um, I'm so stressed. <laughs> I mean, everything is stressing me out, including this puppy right now trying to eat this dang cord. So, yeah, I just need a break. So many Syrian childhoods have been blighted by trauma. In the northwest of the country, the young have learnt another horrible lesson. Catastrophe comes in different ways. And uh, we're going to take some time with our family to uh, get our heads in a better space because mm. right now they're in a pretty 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 bad one yeah. so when disasters hit it takes bravery beyond comprehension to run towards the danger the uk's search and rescue aid team is here to look for signs of life what they are confronted with is death and destruction on an apocalyptic scale all right guys i love you and I'll see you as soon as I feel better. So, go buy your bears. <laughs> go buy them. Look how cute. Go buy them all. Okay, bye.